nitroprusside, and the full name is sodium nitroprusside, so I'll refer to it as SNP. Now, sodium nitroprusside is used most commonly for hypertensive emergency. Hypertensive emergency is a, a state of very high blood pressure, systolic blood pressure greater than 180, or diastolic blood pressure greater than 120. Now, in addition to having very high blood pressure, you also have signs of end organ damage. And some of the more common findings include a headache or a blurry vision. Now, sodium nitroprusside is used in hypertensive emergency in the IV form. And it can reduce blood pressure pretty quickly within uh, minutes. And also, it's very nicely um, titrated to meet the needs of the patient. But there is a few things you need to be cautious of. You should not exceed a certain initial rate, and that is, and that is 0 0.3 mcg per kg per minute. And then when you do titrate it up to lower the blood pressure, you have to do it slowly and never exceed the maximum, which is 10 mcg per kg per minute. If you do exceed these numbers, you'll run into problems, and I'll talk about that a little later. Now what I want to do is discuss the biochemical pathway of sodium nitroprusside. Sodium nitroprusside breaks down into the following. The first is nitric oxide, and the byproduct is cyanide, also sometimes referred to as CN negative. Nitric oxide goes on to activate something known as guanolate cyclase, and that results in increased levels of cyclic GMP. And it is that that leads to vascular smooth muscle relaxation. And when that happens, that causes vasodilation. And when you have vasodilation of the vessels, you get a lower blood pressure. Now, what about the cyanide? What happens to it? Obviously, cyanide is something that we don't want. So there's a natural process in the liver that occurs where thiosulfate combines with the cyanide with the help of an enzyme known as rhodinase and converts it to thiocyanate. And this thiocyanate is then excreted by the kidneys in your urine. So when everything's working properly, the cyanide doesn't cause any problems. But sometimes you do have an accumulation of cyanide. And that, of course, is very bad. Cyanide toxicity can happen for a few reasons. For example, liver problems, also kidney problems, liver impairment, renal insufficiency. So if you do have cyanide toxicity because of sodium nitroprusside, what type of symptoms will the patient present with? Signs of cyanide toxicity include mental status changes. Patient may experience nausea and vomiting. There may be a decrease in heart rate. And there also may be hyperventilations. And shallow respirations. So if you have a scenario where a patient has been placed on sodium nitroprusside, all of a sudden develops this, definitely you need to investigate a possible cyanide toxicity. And that can be done by measuring the cyanide concentration. And if it's greater than 2 mcg per ml, then that's considered toxic range. So how do you treat it? Well, you have to give thiosulfate. And that was, you know, normally done by the liver, but for some reason it's not uh, occurring naturally, so you have to give it. And you give it in the IV form, and that will help solve the cyanide toxicity. 
So now let's take a look at a couple of vignettes. 49-year-old man with a history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, comes to the physician because of a two-day history of severe headache and blurry vision. He also has blood in the urine. Current medications include atenolol, hydrochlorothiazide, and lovastatin. Temperature is 37, blood pressure is 196 over 140, and respirations are 10. Physical exam shows no abnormalities. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in management? Well, of all the choices listed, IV is probably the best way to go because that's a very high blood pressure and also because he has a headache and blurry vision that shows signs of end organ damage. So this is a state of hypertensive emergency. And IV nitroprusside is probably the best one of the answer choices listed. So choice B. And finally, 50-year-old man with hypertension and migraines has been admitted to the hospital for management of hypertensive emergency. His medical regimen includes metoprolol and aspirin. On admission to your unit, he has started on sodium nitroprusside infusion for blood pressure control. Two days later, you are asked to evaluate him by a nurse who is concerned that he is hyperventilating. He appears to be very anxious. Temperature is 38, blood pressure is 105 over 71, pulse is 112, respirations are 28. Physical exam is unremarkable. Lab studies show an elevated serum lactate. Appropriately, you immediately suspect cyanide toxicity from the nitroprusside infusion. The most appropriate intervention at this time is. Well, remember, the liver naturally uses thiosulfate to combine the cyanide with the help of an enzyme known as rhodinase and to a molecule known as thiocyanate. And thiocyanate is then naturally excreted by the kidney in your urine. So this happens normally, but if it's not happening for some reason, maybe the liver is impaired, then you have to then give this thiosulfate IV. So the answer choice is that would be choice E.